us what things can spoil? Um, we're not very deep into shooting season four right now, and so I don't have a ton of answers. I can tell you that I play this character named Brian, who I refer to as Bry Guy. Um, I think he has a shinier disposition than Quentin does. Um, uh, and that he spends 75% of his time on screen covered in blood. That's what I got. Huh? Hard to say. <laughs> what I love most about Elliot and Quentin is that it seems like no matter what happens, they always have this multi-layered connection. Even at the end of season three, as new people, they seem to find they do find each other. So what is it about their relationship that always seems to lead them back to one another no matter how far apart they are? I think they're they're very similar people um, who chose different ways of expressing themselves. Um, uh, as much as you can believe in soulmates, I think I think they they probably are. Uh, um, I think they never really seem to stop learning from each other. And I think that's important with like any relationship that is long lasting. It's like how can you keep, how does it evolve? Um, and I think they they uh, they push each other in unexpected ways. It's a lifetime love, I think. Well, and we saw that, right? We saw that in in, in um, episode five, of season three, a life in a day, where these where these guys spent an entire lifetime together and and fell in love and um, and lived a very like complicated life together um, now Quentin and Elliot I think have the emotional uh, wealth of someone who is in 120 years old right you know it's like um, uh, and that knowledge of like having been together through all of that. Uh, they've raised a child together. Um, it's, uh, I don't know, I don't know, it's, it's cool. I don't... So speaking of that, is there any, any morning going on since Elliot's not quite available? Wow, see, there you go. That's what the season's about, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I would, I would imagine if these characters ever Reemerged if Quentin emerges from the body of Brian, uh, that there would be a strong desire to try and get his friend back uh, from the clutches of this of this thing, and whatever that means, whatever that journey is, whether it means uh, defeating it or helping it or transforming it. Uh, going back to season three, episode twenty, uh, the episode called twenty three, where Quentin gets to play the Beast. Oh yeah. So how was that for you? Switching gears. I mean, Quentin's always been the, the good guy, leading to a fall, and now you got to play this arch villain uh, on the show. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't sure how that was going to go. It's like a little worried about the performance aspect of it. I get. I guess. Uh, I just. Until I hadn't really like rehearsed it because I was a little scared of it, and then showed up on the day, and it all just sort of like made sense. You put the costume on, you put the right shoes on, get a better hairstyle, and <laughs> um, uh, the beast is a theatrical creature, right? Which is fun. I I, um, I I do a lot of theater, and so it got to feel pre uh, presentational in that way. He's a he's a he's a person who who's allowed to take up space um, and fun to get to play that because Quentin lives here, right? And and I don't think his energies move really beyond a, a small sphere, but to play someone um, who relishes in the sheer amount of space that, that he claims as his own was really, was really fun. Um, in the first season, I feel like it was very much Quentin's story and everybody else was kind of in it. Yeah. But I really think that this is Julia's story. This is not anybody. Like, it's all about Julia. Cool. Do you agree with that? Like, do you agree that, like, it's it started out for her, it started out as mainly Quentin, and then it, now she's a god and it's all about Julia. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm, I love that perspective. I mean, I think, I think the show has 
gone away from the books in that way that I think it is more of an ensemble based show and I think different people will find themselves drawn to different characters and all of those characters are so much more fully explored than they than they were in the novels because it was just about Quentin's perspective on the world um, uh, that's the luxury of television right um, but I'm uh, I, I'm, I'm happy that you feel that way you know like I I'm glad that we've created the experience that the um, a show that allows for people to be drawn to different things and to feel like that is the one story. And then are you ever going to sing Taylor Swift again? I'm hoping to get a Britney Spears song. <laughs> has, has how active the fandom is for the show surprised you at all? And how engaged that they are and how vocal they are about the show? Um, I guess not like the... Not the like the amount of engagement. I, I, I think you're on a show like this uh, that a little bit is to be expected. But what's surprising is and uh, exciting about the audience is that like a lot of us, I think, were drawn to these books for some of the nuanced conversations that it creates about um, uh, depression and anxiety and, and sexual assault. And um, I have found that. Uh, as actors, that's a part of the show that, that we are very careful to guard and to usher those conversations with the utmost respect. Um, but sometimes it can get you can get lost in the magic a little bit, and we're up in Vancouver, and, and it can feel like we're just like uh, uh, the, that attention really isn't worthwhile. But then I come here, and we, we you know we have a, a room full of two thousand people, two thousand strangers, and ninety percent of the people they get up and ask questions want to talk about their own personal experiences with uh, with depression and sexual assault um, and to be on a show that creates an environment in which in a room full of strangers your innermost demons are on the tip of your tongue is pretty cool 